Hi there, I'm Allison Hans and welcome to the Working Woman Report. Today's guest, Glennon Doyle Melton, is an influential author and blogger whose content reaches more than 7 million people each week. She's the founder of the online community, The Momastery, and the creator and president of Together Rising, a nonprofit that raises millions for families around the world. Her first book, titled Carry On Warrior, became a New York Times bestseller. Her second, Love Warrior, has followed suit and is now one of Oprah's book club picks. In Carry On Warrior, Glennon wrote about the power of embracing our messy, beautiful lives. Critics called it funny, honest, and incredibly brave. Her life may have been messy, but the center of it all was her rock, husband Craig. One paper referred to her marriage as the jewel in the crown of her blogging universe. However, what no one knew at the time was just how much that universe was about to change and how things aren't necessarily how they appear. Her second book, Love Warrior, tells the story about that change, what happened to her, and the lessons she learned along the way. So I simply began our time together by asking Glennon, what is the new book about? Glennon, thank you so much for joining us today. Ah, thanks for having me, great day. Oh, a terrific day. So tell me a little bit about your book, first of all. Okay, well my, my most recent book is called Love Warrior. Um, I love the name. Thank you, thank you. It's about kind of, um, well it's about the implosion of my marriage and about how um, that kind of kick-started a journey for me of, I don't know, becoming a woman who learned how to just be the woman I was meant to be before the world told me who I was supposed to be, which has ended in this sort of crazy freedom and joy for me, which is so weird how like the, the stuff that seems so bad in our lives sometimes are the beginning of something beautiful, you know? Okay, well let's, let's dig down into the book. So yeah. what happened, how many years ago was it that your marriage started to fall apart. So I was in a therapy session with Craig, my husband, and um, he out of the blue revealed to me that he'd actually been unfaithful to me throughout our whole marriage. It was a bad day. A Did you bad have day. any idea? No, and I always thought that women who said they didn't have a clue were like a little slow. Yeah. <laughs> But I really didn't have a clue. And I mean, in retrospect, I can, there's a lot that wasn't right. You know, we can always see it looking back. But I think the problem is I always thought it was me. Like, I think women do that. We think, like, something feels off, so we assume there's something wrong with us. But sometimes there's nothing wrong with us. Sometimes there's just something wrong. Right? So, um, you know, from that, I've learned to trust myself. When something feels off, it usually is. So when the marriage was breaking up. How long did this go on for? Because a lot of women will be in a rocky marriage or they'll know that someone is cheating on them and they'll stay. Yes, yeah, so really I left right away. You, okay. I, well, he left, I, I had him leave. Um, and then we kind of entered into this period where we just both, I call it staying on your mats. Like it was a, a time where it would have been really easy to just um, get super rageful and um, kind of part. But we didn't. I mean, we stayed separated for a long time, but we both entered intensive therapy um, separately. We figured out that what this really, what a marriage really is, is it, a marriage is only as healthy as the individuals are inside of it, right? That's it. So anyway, we both went in um, kind of these health journeys, really. And, and I thought that we were doing it so that we could have our like happily ever after at the end. We weren't. We were doing it, we were both becoming healthy, wholer people so that we could part from each other in a way that felt, that was without anger and that was um, peaceful and that felt like two whole people making a decision to, to do life separately but with lots of respect and that's where we are. Like we've divorced um, but we live seven houses from each other and we do all of our crazy modern family dinners and. Um, I have, it's, it's weird, but I have a ton of respect for him because he did the work he needed to do to become the man that my kids deserve to have as a father. Did you just come up with this book? What was the trajectory? You're in this marriage that's failing and then were you writing on the side? Yeah. What was your profession prior to that? Oh no, or I've been a writer for a decade. Okay. I had a book that came out before Love Warrior that was a New York okay. Times bestseller too. Okay. So I have been writing for a long time. Okay. 
Um, I was actually, when I got the news in therapy, it was a week before I had to go on a national tour for Carry On Warrior. Oh, wow. And just so you know, I was going on the road as a relationship expert. What did you do? <laughs> I was like, I think that part of my career might be over now because I feel like it's a hard sell now. Oh, man. <laughs> so, so I did what women do, what we do when everything Take falls it. apart. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if it's taking it. I think it's just being a badass, yeah. right? Like, that's what women do. Everything's falling apart around us, and we just keep freaking showing up. And that's why the world keeps spinning. I did what every woman does in, in, in any situation where everything she thought she knew falls apart. You know, she just keeps showing up for her people, and that's what I did. So, Love Warrior, I never thought I was writing that privately. I thought I never in a million years thought that I would publish that book. And my editor, who happens to be one of my really good friends, I was trying to write other things because I was like, I'm not going to tell that story. I'll write other things. And it was all crap because a writer can only write the best story in her life. If she's writing something else, it's always going to be crap, right? So um, my friend who was my editor uh, texted me one morning and said, how are you? And I was in the thick of the pain of the marriage. And um, I sent her a few pages of this like journal I was keeping. And she goes, oh my god. Uh, is it is now the time to tell you that we are definitely publishing this? <laughs> and I was like, no, that's not going to happen. And then over time, Craig and I had a lot of conversations about it. And, you know, the funny thing is that the way I got sober, so the way all of this started, was that I learned that we're only as sick as our secrets, right? That, like, it is very true that the truth will set us free. And it will not only set us free, but it will set other people free, too. And so we just kept thinking, like, why aren't we publishing this story? And the only answer we could come up with was just shame. We're ashamed. But the thing is, I don't believe in shame. So whenever the answer is, I'm ashamed, I'm always like, well, screw it. I'm going to do it anyway, because shame isn't real. So, you know, Craig had a lot to get healthy from, too. Um, and he, bought, he really believes in the whole truth will set you free. And so we decided, all right, let's just do it. So obviously I didn't publish my journal. Like it took two years to turn it into art. You don't just put out your journal. But um, yeah, we sure did it. Just imagine you're going out on the road about to tour your new book. As far as everyone else is concerned, you're a relationship expert and then your own relationship starts to break down. So many of us would have just given up. But not only did Glennon pick herself up and keep going, she turned that experience into an even more powerful second book. As Glennon points out, not every relationship has to succeed. She believes that sometimes we can become so invested in a relationship that isn't working that if we do walk away, all that's left is half of something that was broken. To her, becoming whole again is key. And as we'll find out after the break, men and women have very different challenges to make that happen. Welcome back to the Working Woman Report. I'm Allison Hans. Today we're talking to Glennon Doyle Melton, the influential blogger turned author whose life as a relationship expert was turned upside down when her own marriage fell apart. Her latest book, Love Warrior, is about what happened next. Her advice, you are half of a broken whole and now you need to become whole again before you can truly move on and find love again. So I asked her, how on earth do you even begin to pick up those pieces and start the healing process? What's the work that needs to be done? So what is the work? If you find yourself where you were at, what, what should someone do? Yeah, well, I feel like it's different for everybody. I can tell you that what I've seen, I've seen patterns for women and men that I think are interesting. For me, I think, I, you know, we are all born whole, body, mind, and spirit. I think that um, what happened to me as a young girl and happens to a lot of, of little ones, little girls, is that the world gives us so many um, sh shaming and aggressive and confusing messages about our bodies that we disassociate from our bodies early. Right, so we stop thinking of our bodies as um, really divine um, portals of love and wisdom. They are just as holy as our spirits and our minds. And we kind of agree with the world that our bodies are just objects, right? So that looks like we care more about the way we look than the way we feel. 
we don't even know what we desire anymore because we're too concerned with being desired. We don't know what we want because we just care about being wanted. So that happened to me. I mean, I had a complete disassociation from my body, which is why I started an eating disorder early, which is why I had major issues with sex. Um, and so for me, the work was becoming whole again by reuniting with my body. And so it had a lot to do with, I did a lot of yoga. I did a lot of like, my work was very um, coming back into my body. Craig, my husband, which is so interesting that I see with guys, it's like, so the world tells little girls that, you know, good girls don't want, don't desire, don't have an appetite. But, so we disassociate from our bodies. But the world tells little boys that brave boys don't cry, don't feel. So they disassociate with their emotions, right? So, and then we freaking marry each other, right? <laughs> it's a mess. So like Craig's trying to love me with his body, but I don't live there. I'm trying to love him with my mind and my emotions, but he doesn't live there. So for him, the work had a lot to do with getting back in touch with his feelings, right? So I had to learn how to get back into my body. He had to learn how to get back into his mind and his emotions. Um, so his, his work looked a lot different than mine. His had a lot to do with, their, he had a lot of intensive therapy. I had a lot of like body work to do. It all, I think it all has to do with figuring out how to become whole. Like you have to be, in order to be in any kind of healthy relationship, you have to be a whole person. Which is cool because Craig and I are both in new relationships now and we're like better. You know, it's totally different. Everything's different because we're not like trying to complete ourselves with anybody else. We're just trying to find like a compliment to ourselves. This book, like her last, is already a New York Times bestseller, thanks in part to Glennon's loyal online following. However, there is one fan who we can safely say has contributed slightly more to the success of the book than most. Ms. Oprah Winfrey, who made Love Warrior one of her book club picks. And for anyone who might wonder whether it's really Oprah who chooses the books, when Glennon was added to the list, she definitely got the personal touch. I asked her exactly how it all came about and what it was like the day she got that call. Well, she, I was at her house doing Super Soul Sunday. Oh, and you we, just had Oprah's yes, house. Yes, yes. <laughs> with her dogs. Oh, that's amazing. Because whenever I get nervous, I just try to find the dogs in the room okay. and, and play with them. Um, she's just, she's ridiculous. She's the most loving, real, majestic, however she seems in, in the media, in, yeah. the, in the real life, she's a million times more amazing. I love so were you like sitting in that tree area yeah. that she has? So you're Under the like, oaks under the oaks and then a few weeks later I was in a hotel room with my mom and she, Oprah called my phone to tell me about the book club Amazing. and my mom I just remember my mom was laying next to me we were watching some horrible TV show and she goes who is it I was like it's Oprah <laughs> and she just stood Oprah. up and ran into the bathroom like she couldn't take it it was like it too is. much excitement it so is she too left me alone in the bathroom because she or in the room because she couldn't take it and is it any wonder her mom was so excited? Not only would Oprah's support allow Glennon to bring her wise words to a whole new audience, the accolade also saw her work held up alongside the likes of individuals like Maya Angelou and John Steinbeck. Oprah's view on the book? You're gonna absolutely love this book and the spirit of it, whether you're married or single, whether you're a mom or not. High praise indeed. And while these days, Glennon may have the love and support of a whole load of celebrity fans, when this all began, she tells me she was just writing a humble little blog. That blog was called The Momastery, and it's since grown into a huge global community. But back then, she was only really writing for herself and really didn't think anyone else would be reading. It ultimately may have been what has allowed her to develop the open, honest, and unguarded voice that her fans, who are now in the millions, have grown to love. And now you have a group, an online group, that you also work with. Tell me a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, so that started, that was the first thing I started. So that started way before the books. It's, okay. It was an online, it's, it is an online community called Monastery. Um, and that's where I just started writing these in this, I mean, I think I, the way I describe it is we have two voices, right? We have our truest voice that's in the back of our head, and then we have our representative voice. So our representative voice is the one that's saying like the socially appropriate things while the real voice is like, I'm lonely, I hate everything, I'm whatever. So I just decided to pull forward the real voice and use it all the time in my writing, which other people were very attracted to because everyone's so freaking sick of just being fake all the time, right? 
So Monastery just turned into this huge community, which then turned into Together Rising, which is my nonprofit, when we've raised close to $5 million now for women and children in crisis all over the world. So it's this amazing thing that happens to women. Like Monastery was this place where women fill up. And then, of course, when women fill up, they just overflow, right? to their communities, and that's what Together Rising is. And the reason we support women is because every study that's ever been done in the history of the world tells us that if you want to get a family or a community or a nation rising, you help one woman at a time. Because when you help a woman rise, what always happens is that it trickles down to her people. For whatever reason, I'm not judging, but it doesn't happen the same way with men, right? And I'm not saying that, it, it's all, it's the studies, okay? But um, one her at a time, together rising, to get her rising, one woman at a time, that's what we do. And I think really every word that I speak or write is really about together rising. Almost $5 million raised by women who first came together to help themselves and then felt they had no choice but to start helping others. Now that's impressive. Coming up, we find out what Glennon really wants the women of the world to know. Welcome back to the Working Woman Report. I'm Allison Hans. With me today, we're joined by Glennon Doyle Melton, the blogger and author behind the two New York Times bestsellers, Carry On Warrior and Love Warrior. Before the break, we found out how Glennon discovered her unmistakably truthful voice that allows her to connect so deeply with her readers. I asked Lennon if she wants the women reading Love Warrior to take home one single message from the story of her breakup. And if so, what is that message? So what is your message to women? Because I understand the narrative that you put forth, but what are the practical steps yeah, that I mean, women I think can that take? I think that um, what's made all the difference for me and like what I would say is the journey of the warrior, my book is called Love Warrior, is, um, you know, the epigraph of my book is the Joan of Arc quote. Like, I'm not afraid I was born to do this. And I think every day of Joan of Arc on her horse, like marching straight towards the fire of her life. And I think that so many women, we don't do that. Like we know underneath what the, what the thing is we have to deal with in our personal life, whether it's like addiction or um, shame or something from our past that we need to pull back up so we can go forward. But we avoid it because we think we can't handle pain. Or we know the problem in our relationship. We know our husband's cheating, or we know our daughter's bulimic, or we know that friendship's toxic, but we won't deal with it because we don't think we can handle it. We're like the Joan of Arc who runs away from the battle instead of towards it, right? Because we think we can't handle what's there. Or in the world, like we're at a leadership conference right now, we, run, we hide from the pain of the world because we think we can't take it. Instead of getting on our, on our horse and rushing straight towards the thing that breaks our heart, like racism or poverty or war or whatever it is. So I think one of my messages to women is that you, should, you can't be afraid of the pain of your life. Your job every single morning, we are the warriors of the world. Like it is our, our mission and our job to get on our horse every morning and rush straight towards the, our personal pain and our relational pain and the world's pain. Because in the fire is where we find our wholeness and our purpose. What is your message to your daughters? Ooh, um, yeah. So my message to my daughters right now, it's different all the time as I change and become a different woman every year. Um, I think right now what I want my girls to know and what really one of the most important things I learned about during the Love Warrior process was, I figured out that I have spent my entire life asking other people what I should do and who I should be. My whole freaking life, my, my community, my husband, my family, my church, my culture, magazines, like who should I be? And when you are forced with the, the beauty the beauty of being forced to make really incredibly hard decisions, like should I stay, should I go, should, is that you don't have a choice but to drown out all those voices and go inside. So what I did during that time is I promised myself that I would spend 10 solid minutes in the quiet where there were no other voices telling me what I should do or what I wanted and I would learn how to listen to the internal voice. Right? So I call that voice God, some people call it wisdom, some people call it intuition. I have a friend who has some God issues, she calls it Sebastian. I don't think it matters what the heck you call it. I just think it matters that you know how to listen for it. Right? Because women are told for so long to be selfless, that the way to be a successful woman is to be selfless, and then we wake up one morning and we don't have a self, and we wonder why. 
because we've spent our whole life trying to get rid of this self, right? So what I want my girls to know is that they always know what to do. Every time a woman says she doesn't know what to do, she's lying. She knows what to do. She just doesn't want to do the thing that she knows to do. So she has to call 30 of her friends and say, what should I do? What should I do? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Because we love to pull. Women love to pull the world about what we should do because we don't know how to go inside, right? We're only used to asking for permission about what to do. So what I want my girls to know is that they will always know what to do. Their only jobs in life are to check with the inside voice, the still small voice, to do the next right thing without asking for permission from the world, and then to refuse to explain themselves. I seriously feel like the most revolutionary thing a woman can do is to refuse to explain herself. Do the next right thing and then don't justify it. You don't have to go around to the world explaining to all of your friends and your family and your culture why you did the thing you did. You can just do it. You can live like a man. <laughs> right? Live like a man. <laughs> live like, like a, a warrior. <laughs> yes. Live like a badass. That's right. And if you screw up, so freaking what? You just try again. Right? There's no rule or law that says you're going to get struck down if you make the wrong decision. Make the wrong decision and then backtrack and do it again. But don't ask, don't spend your whole life asking for permission and then justifying yourself. Waste of energy. Men don't do that. Stop asking permission to do the things we already know we want to do and stop feeling like we need to justify the choices we've made. Could it really be that simple? Well, if you give it a go, I will too. Get in touch and tell me whether Glennon's advice works for you. Now, as we come to a close here, with so much having changed in Glennon's life between the end of her first book and the beginning of her second, her fans, including me, all want to know one thing. What's next? Um, you know what I want to do? I want to, like, focus on real life. I feel like sometimes when you get into this thing, you're, I'm, you're on the road talking about love all the time, talking about serving people all the time, and then there's less time to actually do it in your real life. So I'm super excited to get um, back to my people, to kind of, I'm in a new relationship now that I'm like over the moon about. I wanna figure out how to do that well. Why is this relationship good? I think sometimes women are in relationships and they don't, yeah. they don't realize that it's a bad relationship. Yeah. They just keep telling themselves that it's yeah. a good relationship. I, I know, because I did that for many years. Um, I don't know, I mean, I think it's between two really whole people. You know, um, I think we want each other more than we like desperately need each other. Um, I'm just a different person. I'm 40 years old now. I've run out of craps to give. Like, I'm not trying to please anybody. I'm not trying to impress anybody. I'm just like my real true self, this person. Um, I don't know. It feels completely different. It's, 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 um, it's the good kind of work. Like, it's still hard, but um, I had this moment where in my marriage where I was like, this is the wrong kind of heart. Like there's a right kind of heart and there's a wrong kind of heart and this is the wrong kind of heart. So this new one I think is the right kind of heart. Um, and I'm just, I'm just really excited to figure out how to do it well. Well, it has been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. Really an absolute treat. And uh, I think so many women are going to take away so much inspiration from your words and certainly your book. And I guess it's really about getting real. Yeah. Getting real. Yeah, and trusting yourself. With that voice inside. Yeah. Well, you did it, and hopefully other women can do it too. Thank you. Thank I know you. they can, I know they can. Thank it's not you. easy, but it's good. Thank, Thank you so much for being Thank here today. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. There you have it. Even the relationship experts need to take some time out and focus on living their own lives. Although I have a feeling it won't be too long before Glennon's back with yet another bestseller. That's all for this edition of the Working Woman Report. Don't forget to connect with us in the social media world on Facebook and Twitter. And of course, on our website, workingwomanreport.com. Tune in next time for more stories on our amazing women who knows, maybe you're next. See you then.